damn Yankees. Michael Cardelloni, Jack Blades, Tommy Shaw, and Ted Lee Von Nugenberger are maximum shit kicker American rock and roll boys. Case closed. <laughs> Now I know what you're thinking. Are you seriously gonna make the first episode of your retrospective series about the damn Yankees? Yes. Yes! Yes! Oh sure, they only released two albums, making this video as long as the average bowel movement and... Yeah, their hit songs are as cheesy as a Frenchman's diet, but two things. One, I fully intend on making longer videos. The Thin Lizzy retrospective is still in the works, but this is my show, and I will talk about whatever band I goddamn well please, no matter how many albums they made. And two, the damn Yankees are a good band. And I'm saying that unironically, without any shame. The damn Yankees are one of those few supergroups outside of Cream and the Traveling Wilburys who had chemistry to spare, and they used that chemistry to crank out some of the best AOR music the 1990s had to offer. Well, at least the first two years of it. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get right on into the damn Yankees. My uh, philosophy is more in hindsight. You know, I can look back and see the paths that I chose, uh, but I, I was always doing what I wanted to do. I was kind of a shy kid, and, and my guitar allowed me a place to just have total freedom and, and get to call all the shots. And, and it also allowed me a, a way to, in social situations to, to sort of be in charge of everything and I, I, you know, I didn't have to think of something clever to say. I could write a song and have that do the speaking for me. And uh, <clears throat> so, so for me, it, it, was, it was a way to be accepted socially, a way to meet girls. I got a bad, bad reputation. The damn Yankees are made up of four people. Tommy Shaw from Utter Shit Band Sticks, Jack Blades of the eh, Night Ranger, former Accept and Leonard Skinner drummer Michael Carbolone, and the man who has shredded more underage poon than Jerry Lee Lewis, Ted motherfucking Nugent. Young girls were infatuated with Ted, and when his willpower was put to the test, he failed miserably. Oh, they were just everywhere you had to get a crowbar, just pummel them. Knock them off the doorknob. They were hanging on your lingai. Um, yes, it, I, it could have been whiskey, it could have been drugs, but no, I was a wang-dang addict. I mean, I was addicted to girls. Addicted. It was hopeless. It was beautiful. Several stars had to align before the damn Yankees formed. The breakup of Styx, Tommy Shaw and Ted Nugent's careers hitting the shit slick, and Jack Blades looking for the exit on the Night Ranger Express. But it wasn't until A&R man John Kalander brought these four men together to jam that the damn Yankees were born. I just, I didn't know what to expect. When, when Tommy first called and said Nugent's coming in and we're going to get together and jam, I thought, well, this is going to be fun, but it'll never work. You know, because it's like Tommy's way over here and Ted's way over here. But uh, it worked great because they complemented each other. And yeah, there was an immediate gel that happened. And when Jack did come in two months later, uh, he was the missing link. The group felt an immediate connection. And after a small New York club gig to see if the people liked the band as much as they did, they walked into the studio and cranked out Damn Yankees. Kicking off with the kick-ass track, Coming of Age, this album is stacked to the motherfucking rafters with AOR Masterworks. Sure, I could talk about the hit song high enough, but honestly, you're only gonna like that song if you like power ballad dick cheese. Well, it's a good thing for me that I like that artery clog and crap. Other than that, the rest of the songs are motherfucking magical. Tommy and Jack's voices blend so well from song to song, and Ted Nugent's guitar and Michael Cardelloni's drumming give these songs the edge they need to escape the butt wipe bin. Best track? For my money, it's gotta be the atmospheric epicness of Runaway.
Although a close second is gonna have to go to the only song Ted Nugent fully sings on this record, the merciless motherfucking pile driver. <laughs> The first damn Yankees record is heavy and melodic in all the right ways. You're doing yourself a fucking disservice for not listening to it, because it will take you high enough. Yeah, screw you, it's my video and I'll pun if I want to. But with an absolute barn burner right out the gate, is it possible for the damn Yankees to craft a worthy follow-up? Adios, compadre. How long do we actually go on? About a minute. Really? Yeah. A minute. With a bowling shoe ugly album cover and reviews to match, you'd think I'd have similar sentiments about the album Don't Tread. Well... We said meh. M-E-H. Meh. Look, it's not the worst thing I've ever heard, not by a country fucking mile. But with more key changes than a celebrity with a stalker and more embarrassing lyrics than Alice Cooper's Fantasy Man, it is far from the best. And the reason that is, is not the album's fault, it's just that high enough, as much as I love it, was such a big fucking hit that who wouldn't want to duplicate that? And that's exactly what they did. Duplicate it. think this album doesn't have any heavy hitters. Firefly, which is honestly Pile Driver Part 2, This Side of Hell, and the musical manifestation of the middle finger I would also like to erect to anyone who tries to legislate my rights away, don't tread on me. Don't you dare. Tread is the safest follow-up the damn Yankees could have recorded, and sadly, it would be their last. While they did record a third album, it really wasn't up to their standards, so they just cherry-picked the best songs from those recording sessions and just scattered to the four winds. And that's how it's been for the last few years with the occasional reunion. Look, would I love it for the original four guys to get back together and turn every city they visit into Rock City? Hell yeah, I would. But since their schedules are all filled up with their respective projects, I just gotta wait for an opening. And until then, that is where we leave this video. Thank you for watching this video and spending some time with me. I hope to see you all again soon. Until then, I am Liam Winfield. Keep on rocking. I certainly have a lust for life that is rivaled by only meat-hungry hounds in the night uh, of one of one of our, I'm which, uh, but I dig it, man. I mean, I I'm alive. I want to rock and roll, and I want to play with my kids, and I want to run with the hounds, and I want to kill my own dinner, and I want to, you know, uh, hump my own swamp, and I want to change my own oil, and I want to cut my own heating wood, and I want to my own piece in my magazine and I got my own camp for kids and I do have the Ted Nugent World Bowhunter Organization and publication that I write with my wife and my hunting buddies 
And I also write a bi-monthly column for Off-Road Magazine, like I need more to do. And I also tour at the Damn Yankees.